Hi everyone, I'm retired meteorologist Pat Prokop. Today is Tuesday, October 8th. This is a Hurricane Milton update. Milton, once again, a Category 5 hurricane. It had dropped down to a Category 4, but this afternoon it gained more energy. It's back up to 165 mile per hour winds, and the barometric pressure is down to 918 millibars. And speaking of millibars, Milton has become one of the most intense hurricanes ever in the Gulf of Mexico following Wilma back in 2005 where its pressure was the lowest recorded, 882 millibars, then Gilbert in 1988 at 888. The Labor Day storm way back in 1935, they didn't name storms back then, uh, 26.34 uh, inches of mercury or 892. And then Rita again in 2005, 2005 was a bad year, uh, 895. And then there's Milton, 2024, 897. And then uh, rounding out the uh, uh, list is Allen in 1980 at 899. If you're wondering, um, Hurricane Camille was at 900 millibars. So, uh, and Katrina was at, I think, 903 millibars. But these are the top intense hurricanes ever in the Gulf of Mexico, and we're dealing with one right now. So let's take a look at the uh, satellite imagery. There it is right there. There's the satellite imagery showing Hurricane Milton, a very intense hurricane. Uh, you can see the uh, the eye of the storm is very intense and very uh, uh, circular and very small, which is very intense. And the winds around this are flowing at about 165 miles per hour with higher gusts approaching 200 miles per hour. Now here's a uh, view from the infrared, uh, give you a better idea just how intense this storm is. Uh, this uh, purple area has uh, uh, temperature, cloud top temperatures around minus 85. That's about 100. 15 to 120 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. You know, the, the colder the cloud tops, the uh, more intense the storm. And then as you go into the core of the storm itself, there you have warm uh, conditions. That's the difference between a, a hurricane uh, and a uh, continental low pressure system. A hurricane is a warm core center. Continental storm is a cold core center. This is a warm core center, certainly uh, with very, very cold cloud tops surrounding the warm core. And there it is moving to the east northeast at about 10 miles per hour. All right, let's go to the National Hurricane Center. Here's the latest forecast. This is as of five o'clock this afternoon. It says four o'clock. That's uh, uh, central daylight time, five o'clock eastern daylight time and uh, hurricane warnings are in effect for the coast of uh, Florida on both the east and the west coast and tropical storm warnings let's go to the uh, the updated model uh, graphics uh, shows you more about what the hurricane warnings and, and the watches mean and the hurricane warnings cover all of the central portions of Florida uh, uh, from uh, uh, the mid coast of uh, the west coast to the mid coast of the east coast. Tropical storm warnings in effect across the northern portions of Florida and the southeast Florida. And then this hashed area here is a tropical storm warning and a hurricane watch in effect for Florida. What about Georgia and South Carolina? A lot, most, uh, uh, a lot of my viewers and most of my viewers are more concerned about this area because uh, that's where we live. And a tropical storm watch is in effect for our area uh, for uh, Wednesday night and for Thursday with the anticipation of winds gusting between 39 and about 50 miles per hour. Uh, tropical storm force winds are 39 miles per hour. That goes all the way up to the coast uh, and, and to the Charleston area, just north of Charleston, uh, South Carolina. So all of the Georgia coast under a tropical storm watch and a tropical storm warning from the Ottawa River southward. Uh, winds there could exceed uh, 45 miles per hour, up to 50 miles per hour, perhaps. Anyway, we'll, we'll take a look at that in a minute. And uh, let's take, take a look at the tidal surge that could be associated with this storm. Needless to say, on the west coast of Florida, it is going to be tragic. A horrible storm surge will be moving on shore uh, in and around the Tampa, uh, St. Peter's, Clearwater area uh, into um, uh, down to the uh, uh, mid coast of western Florida. Here you can see uh, 10 to 15 foot storm surge, and then even that, an 8 to 12 foot surge is is also just just horrible. Uh, so this whole west coast of Florida uh, is going to be inundated by very strong tidal surges coming on in. And then on the west coast, we have a uh, storm 
potential storm surge of two to four feet. And what does that mean? Well, the high tide uh, on Wednesday and Thursday for the Georgia coast is somewhere around 7.2 feet. And most of the flooding occurs around nine and a half feet, 9.6 in the Savannah area. Uh, same thing for uh, Hilton Head and Beaufort. So if we have a seven foot tide coming in, 7.2 to be exact, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, uh, you add these numbers to that tide. So you could have anywhere from a nine foot to a uh, 11 foot tide. So if it's an 11 foot tide, that's gonna give you some uh, flooding uh, in and around the coastal areas. So keep an eye out for that, a possibility of flooding conditions during the time of the high tides on Wednesday and Thursday morning. Fortunately, again, for us, the moon is at quadrature, so the tides aren't so high. If this storm came in a week later, our tides will be 9.2 feet. That, with this kind of a surge, would give us a 13-foot tide. We don't want anything to do with that. But anyway, uh, be on the anticipation for uh, tides anywhere between 9 and 11 feet uh, in our area. Flooding, again, occurs around 9.5 feet and above. All right, let's move along and look at the uh, potential rainfall. Storm system has shifted a little bit further south, which is good for us, bad for Florida, but uh, very heavy rains will be uh, associated with the passage of the core of the storm into central Florida. Very little, I mean, I expect some rain in south central Georgia and southeastern Georgia, but I'm not expecting much at all in the Savannah area and definitely west of Interstate 95, uh, in Georgia, uh, particularly once you get north of the uh, Jessup area, I don't expect to see any rain there at all, and I'm not expecting any rain in uh, South Carolina, but over in the Florida area, it's just going to be terrible, terrible rain, along with the surge of the uh, uh, storm surge coming on in. Uh, we're looking at rain potential from the uh, Storm Prediction Center of, uh, uh, well, 12 to 16 inches of rain possible. So that, that's going to cause tremendous urban flooding all across the interior portions of Florida. All right, let's take a look at the forecast wind gust at sunrise on Thursday. And we're seeing wind potential gusting into the 40 to 45 mile per hour range across central Georgia to southeastern Georgia. Uh, and the 30 to 35 to 40 miles an hour across coastal Georgia. Then along the coast and the waters, those uh, winds will be gusting even higher than that. Uh, perhaps uh, uh, in the... Uh, 45 to 50 mile per hour range in the open waters off the Atlantic. But on the coast, uh, the winds will be a little less, but still strong and blustery potential. This is probably the worst case scenario of uh, this forecast map here. Uh, potential wind gust uh, 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 in the 40s to 50 mile per hour range. Nothing like what we saw with Hurricane Helena. Those, the winds were gusting 80 to 90 miles per hour across many of our locations in Georgia and, southern, and western South Carolina. Uh, but nothing like that But for here. Now, for Florida, uh, it's a different story. They're going to have hurricane force winds over the interior portions of uh, the peninsula of Florida, and uh, uh, it's just going to produce devastating conditions. Uh, widespread power outages will be associated with that as well. Looking at the precipitation forecast we saw from the National Hurricane Center, uh, this is the computer model forecast showing a band of very heavy rains across central portions of Florida. Anywhere from 6 to 10 inches, maybe up to 12 inches of rain in several locations uh, as the storm passes on through. So, uh, again, looking at my website, savannapat.name, and uh, uh, there you can get the conditions from the National Hurricane Center just by clicking on this map. But uh, once the storm passes through, things are going to be much better off for us, um, particularly by uh, uh, late afternoon Thursday. It'll be blustery with clearing weather conditions. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, looks like some fantastic weather moving in across our area with uh, temperatures highs in the mid 70s and lows in the well in some cases low to mid 50s mid 50s in the uh, coastal areas of Georgia and southern South Carolina maybe upper 40s lower 50s across the interior portions of Georgia and South Carolina but a uh, hurricane uh, Milton is a very, very vicious hurricane. Here's the latest update uh, satellite imagery. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. That that eye is so intense right now uh, with this hurricane. Uh, still over the southern Gulf of Mexico right now. Uh, there's the Yucatan right there. There's the western tip of uh, Cuba. So it's not even showing up. Uh, Florida right there, the western tip of uh, southwest Florida. So 
later on tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night, and then into Thursday morning when the bulk of the storm will be passing across the central portions of Florida and affecting the southern portions and the central portions of Georgia and southern South Carolina. But again, nothing for us like what we saw with Helene. Uh, we should be able to handle this, but still 30 to 40 mile an hour wind, maybe 45 mile an hour wind gust is a little bit uh, on the high side, but I'm not expecting any flooding rains or flooding conditions in the Georgia area, except along the coast, perhaps with the uh, storm surge potential of uh, 9 to 11 feet. I'm looking more toward the 9 to 10 feet uh, storm surge coming in. So some, you know, some flooding could occur during the time of the high tides. All right. Well, thanks for watching and I'll, I'll see you later.